And here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTN Sports. Okay. We're talking Sergey Kovalev. We're talking Alvarez. If you want to hear my reaction, here we go. I did kind of give you a warning about this fight. If you listen to my pre-fight prediction for this particular fight, I said in all the fights on the night that there could potentially be an upsell. This fight right here, well, that fight right there, or maybe the other way around. I don't know. But the fight above me, this was likely to happen. And I explained why it was likely to happen. Let's take this fight back a bit. Sergey Kovalev, um, one of my favorite fighters. I always talked about it. I watched him a long time ago. Big support of his punching power and his ability. And I remember when he first was on the scene in the UK. And I warned people in the UK about Sergey Kovalev and his punching power. Well, I was right about that. And about, you know, if he hits you, you're going to go. I also warned you guys last night of Sergey Kovalev being an alcoholic. And Sergey Kovalev basically being a boozer. and. Uh, when you're a boozer, when you're a drinker and you can't stop drinking and you try and um, have a professional career as a boxer, that gets taken out of you. Now, people can talk all they want about Andre Ward. They can say Andre Ward did the damage. Yeah, he Andre Ward was the guy to exploit those weaknesses in Sergey Kovalev. But we can go back to the Chilimbe fight where excuses were coming out about Kovalev and his um, issues with... Uh, you know, they said it was. They said he had the cold, and all these other poor excuses about Sergey Kovalev at the Chilimbe fight. We looked poor. Chilimbe was the first guy to start giving him some movement, and um, I said, if you go back when I talk about Sergey Kovalev on the outside, he's fantastic. But if you get Sergey Kovalev against the ropes and you put pressure on him and you work his body and you get on the inside, it's an early Christmas for you. I said that before the first Andre Ward fight of Kovalev. I said that in the second Andre Ward fight with Kovalev. I said that's why Andre Ward was going to always beat Kovalev because of the inside game. You have to understand the sport of boxing, the science of boxing. When you have a weak inside game, which basically means you can only keep people at a distance, you cannot fight with anybody who gets inside you, gets beyond your jab and starts to fight in your chest and roughhouse you. You can't do anything. You can't get the same leverage in your shots. You can't generate the same power as you do from long range up close. I noticed that in the uh, two Jean, uh, Jean Pascal fights, where up close, when Pascal had uh, Kovalev against ropes, Kovalev didn't quite know what to do. I said, if that's the case, and he does that against Andre Ward, he's going to have problems. Well, we saw what happened with Andre Ward. Andre Ward in the second fight took him to school and uh, really beat him up. Um, and the crusher was, you know, when you look at it now, you've got to ask yourself the question, was he a flat track bully? Was it one of these guys that loved dishing it out? But when it came to taking it, when it came to him to start taking some punches, the heart was questionable. He didn't really want to know. Against Alvarez, the reason why I thought Alvarez had a very good shot in this fight were a number of reasons. Reason number one, Alvarez work rate, his hand speed, he went to the body. Me personally, if I'm a if, if I'm Kovalev, if I'm managing Kovalev, I keep away from Alvarez. But hey, you're taking a chance against Alvarez because Alvarez good to the body, works well, got a good jab, so he's able to knock Kovalev a balance. I said in this fight where there would be an upset. I said if Kovalev, uh, if Alvarez stands straight in front of Kovalev, he's going to be in trouble. Maybe looking up at lights. And there were moments in the fight early on. Well, although Alvarez was picking the jab off in around four, around three or four, we saw uh, Kovalev start to warm up and start to, like, fancy the job. But the jab started rocking Kovalev's head back more. And then the big right hand started coming over the top. Kovalev has got bad habits, keeps his hands down low, comes forward with his chin in the air. And you can do all these things against guys who are not going to capitalize and scared of you. But when you've got a guy there... Who really wants and Alvarez came out there with intention to knock Kovalev out. 
He was motivated and he saw the weaknesses in Kovalev and he knew. And I said, if Alvarez can start early in this fight and work the body, I said mid to late rounds, you may be in the force of stoppage in this fight. And you saw it here, the stoppage. You can't do this. People think somehow in boxing that because you look great on Instagram, you look great at the weigh-in, that you can abuse your body outside the ring and then inside the ring produce the goods. It don't happen. It doesn't happen. And let this be a warning to anybody else in world boxing that thinks they can have a good old drink, a uh, booze up a uh, week in, week out and eat plenty of grub and stuff their faces and mistreat their body and then think they can keep operating over time at world level. It doesn't happen. It can't happen. You put age on your, you know, age on your body, wear and tear. And then things like this start to happen where you can't go the distance like you used to. You know, Kovalev always had problems uh, tiring in fights. He did tiring fights. But this here, right here, I mean, you can't say that Alvarez did a lot to his body, but Kovalev fell apart. He fell about physically, mentally, and emotionally. And this is it. Kovalev never looked the same fighter since the second Andre Ward fight. Hasn't looked the same fighter. They tried to rehabilitate and bring him with fights. I think what the plan was here was if Kovalev could have got past this fight here, then a unification battle was going to happen. A unification battle was going to happen. So this is where I think uh, they were trying to get past Alvarez. And after getting past Alvarez, the hope was they get a unification bout and cash Kovalev out. Now at what, 35? For me, I'll say Kovalev is done at top level. And let me tell you something else as well. A lot of people talk about Anthony Yard. Tonight, Alvarez was in the right place at the right time. You can look at me. You can laugh at me. You can joke at me. But there's no reason why, with Kovalev's hand down by his side, getting caught with shots to the body, that Anthony Yard could not have become WBO champion last night. You tell me, between Alvarez and, and Kovalev last night, what was so spectacular about both of those guys, that Anthony Yard could not have been in that ring last night. There was nothing in Kovalev nor, nor Alvarez last night. Alvarez took advantage of a Kovalev that was abusing his body outside the ring and technically was flawed, hands down by the side, couldn't fight on the inside. But I've been saying this before, Kovalev is a big puncher. Now, this is a warning also to other big punchers out there. If you're just a big puncher, and you do not know how to fight guys who can move, have got good movement and good jabs, you're going to have problems. This is what's happening in boxing. The art of boxing and sweet science is being lost in the sport. This man here you're talking about, Kovalev, also said that American trainers, they're rubbish and they're not good. Well, you know what? What Kovalev needs to do is to move his head. What Kovalev needs to do is use his feet, get in range. But he couldn't do any of that. He was taking jab after jab, head being rocked back. A good trainer in his corner would have said to him, listen, you need to start blocking that jab. You need to start counting that jab and coming across with your right hand or blocking the jab and come back with left hook. You just stop Alvarez throwing that jab. But the three musketeers, the three blind, the three blind men were in that corner and allowed Kovalev to walk out there round after round, walking onto hard jabs and right hands over the top. Nobody said, keep your hands up. Nobody said, keep your hands up or... You know, slip the jab or block or counter or double up your own jab or back Alvarez up. None of that. They let Kovalev do the same old crap round after round after round. These are the trainers. These are the trainers. So you get what you deserve, basically. You get what you deserve. I don't have any sympathy. And I love Kovalev. I love Kovalev. But you don't, I have no sympathy for this. When you're basically an alcoholic, you're drinking and you're in the sport of boxing. And you're thinking you can, you know, you just can't. You just can't do the two and, and hope. And there are people in in, uh, in space that actually believe that they can, their fighters can drink and, and smoke and party and live their high life and think that their bodies are going to be fantastic and still be the same fight. I'm sorry to disappoint you that Kovalev here is an example of a guy that didn't live the life and this is what happens. I'm sorry. So expect more of this for fighters that are not living the life. So um, I didn't think, I, I thought that Alvarez's jab was good. I thought his right hands were good. But you saw even in the fight, Kovalev was able to hurt Alvarez. The moments he had Alvarez hurt, but couldn't follow up. That's because 
uh, of of his fitness levels and then and a wicked body punching as well. It's what people are saying now. J124 says their crusher got crushed. Ward uh, destroyed Kovalev physically. Pepper said Kovalev was a Traveler News says age catches up. Don't think it's got anything to do with age. Hopkins was boxing till he was 50 years old, but there's a man who looked after his body. Okay. So I don't think it's got anything to do with age. It's how you look after your body outside the ring. Kovalev is an alcoholic. They're trying to sell it to you that he's not, but he is. Kovalev had a long, long career. He took many hard shots on the chin. His chin simply not holding up anymore. Kovalev in the amateurs didn't have the great chins and got knocked out in the amateurs as well. So uh, J124 says, sad seeing Kovalev, amazing talent, one of the best, uh, one of the best, should call it a day. Now seems heart is in it. Got nothing to do his heart. It's to do now the fact that he's been drinking. All right, let's see it now. I haven't watched actually watched this yet. I've watched this even since Reverend Pickles. Thank you so much. Shout out to Revel Pickles for using uh, the video I did of Sam Sheedy and Leon Cameron. Uh, great stuff there, Mr. Pickles. Feel free to use the footage on BWTM anytime you feel to do it. Travel News says, I agree. Uh, people say Ward finished him, but the fight before in 2016, Russia, Kovalev looked the shadow of his former self. Great point there, Spotless Leopard. I mentioned it myself there. That in the fight against Chilimbe, uh, Kovalev looked odd. If you look at if you look at Kovalev's body when he before the award fight was announced, he looked like a bloody cruiserweight. He looked like a bloody cruiserweight. So pull himself down to light heavyweight. So you don't know how much struggle he's having to do to pull himself down in weight. Plus being an alcoholic, not living the lifestyle. I don't know. Kovalev needs to get help. I think. Um, Agree. If you can't move the head, at least protect it. Sounds like it was a good fight. Really, was Kovalev on the bottle? Never. Yeah, he was on the bottle. He's been on the bottle. His, his trainer, John ja uh, J J v. Jackson, mentioned it. John David Jackson also mentioned beforehand, Kovalev cannot take instructions. He won't listen to what I've got to say. So you can blame the trailer all you want. But if a fighter doesn't listen to a trainer and has no belief in the trainer, then trainer fighter starts training himself. Fight to train it actually is a trainer and starts doing things his own way. I can get myself into shape. I don't need no trainer. So I just get in a two bob trainer to come in and do the job. Yeah, just watch me on the pads, watch me sparring, won't criticize me or won't tell me to keep my hands up, won't tell me to, you know, block left jabs or, or block right hands. It's okay. I beat up some two bit sparring partner. You know, don't spend the money in sparring, don't spend the money in training camps. And then guess what happens? You come up a cropper against a guy who's put their the the work in. No sympathies there whatsoever. Uh, unbiased boxing duck squad side B. I hope Tyson doesn't take the fight. That fight, no rush. I can see Tyson Fury fighting Wilder, and unfortunately, uh, for all the skill Tyson Fury's got, you can't abuse your body. And I don't know how much Tyson's abused his body. And um, you know, like I said, let this be a warning to all fighters out there who think they can booze up and drink up and all that sort of stuff and get in the ring, boxing or sport at the highest level. I think is 90 to 95% mental, 10% physical, 90% mental. Do you know what I mean? So if you're not in it or your heart's not in it, we've seen in the video previously, uh, uh, Natasha Jonas, you know, and people talk about Anthony Yard. Now, I think I will do another video separate to this about Anthony Yard and what I'd like to see from him, because I think that is going to be, um, I'll, I'll, I'll nick this into this video as well. So, yeah, um, my thoughts on all of this is that Kovalev needs to retire or he's going to get himself seriously hurt in the sport. Yes, he has punching power, but if your heart's not in it and you're going to continue drinking and being alcoholic, I suggest you take yourself away from the sport, sort of any personal problems you've got, go into rehabilitation and then come back a clean fighter. Now, if you did that, it would be a great story for those people out there who are drinking. So, for, so Sergey, if you're listening to this video, mate, it's not the end of the road. If you don't want it to be, go and get help. If you're on the drink, go and get help and come back. Um, come back 
and you know, get rehabilitation, get your drink, stop your drink, come back and be an inspiration to those in Russia who love the drink. Uh, you, so that's about it. Thank you all so much for watching. When I come back, I'm going to have a little talk about Anthony Yard, the light heavyweight division, and uh, Bivol. Be back. Stay tuned. If you want to make sure you catch me live, make sure you not only hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, the little bell in the corner, hit the subscribe notification button. All right. Check it out. Check out all the interviews recently we've done with Anthony Yard and with uh, the IQ Boxing Academy. Check them out. I hope you like them. Right. This is BWTM Sports reviewing Kovalev versus Alvarez. I'm out. Take care.